Hello again, and this is our second video coming from the library here in Longford. I hope you're all keeping very well. And last week I looked at some stress, basic stress things with you. And just to recap on that, just two things we covered last week. And that one is just to make sure you know where your shoulders are. So just relax those shoulders, let them drop nicely relaxed. And take a nice breath. Very, very good de-stress thing to do is take a breath every so often during the day. Really, really good thing to do. You have to breathe anyway, but be aware of your breath. It really calms things down for you. Today we'll talk about sleep because sleep can be a problem for quite a lot of people. And you know, times in your life when things are difficult, there are worries and worrisome times, and that affects sleep straight away. And especially at this time, we have a lot of worries around the whole COVID thing at the moment. And so to help with some sleep around that, I put some tips together for you today that you can really enhance your night's sleep. And one of the first things to do to get a good night's sleep is to have some exercise during the day. Make sure you get out at some point during the day for some exercise, either a walk or a cycle or something, and stay within those distance guidelines you've been given. But get out there and do a nice brisk walk during the day. And make sure your walk during the day is not too close to your bedtime, because that tends to wind people up too much and they can't sleep properly after. So in the day, sometime early in the day, have a nice walk at some point. Exercise is great, and breathe, get some good air in. Again, be aware of your shoulders, and take some good deep breaths out there as well when you're outside there, get some good air. Exercise is a really good way to enhance sleep during the night. Next thing to do when you get towards bedtime is have a good wind down routine. That's kind of a wind down type thing where you relax, get ready for bed, get things warmed up and so on, so you're preparing for bed. People think they'll just go to bed and just hit the pillow and just conk out straight away. But that doesn't happen. It takes about 20, 30 minutes to really fall asleep for most people. And so a good wind down routine will enhance that. So maybe a nice warm drink or something. People often do a nice shower or a nice bath before they go to bed. All those parts of relaxing and winding down before they get to bed. That really enhances your sleep also. Very, very good thing to do. You won't sleep straight away, don't worry. If it's on your mind anyway, that can detect from sleep as well. So I'll show you next week how to cope with that when, when, when the, the, the mind takes over and thoughts take over. There's a way to handle all that as well. Your sleep space is really important. So where you're sleeping, make sure your bed is comfortable, make sure your pillow is comfortable, your duvet is nice, not too heavy, make sure it's not too bright, too dark, too hot, too cold. We know from research now on sleep that the cooler your bedroom is, the more that enhances your sleep. Say you're away in a hotel somewhere or something, or you're in a hospital some night, often it's harder to go to sleep because the rooms can be so warm in a hospital or in a hotel. <clears throat> and often you can't control those things to a great extent. And that can upset your sleep in some way, also away from home as well. But the warmth of a room can affect sleep. So the research would say the cooler your room is, once you're warm in the bed, once the cooler you are in the, in the room, the better you're going to sleep. So make sure, again, there's no clutter in your bedroom space. That's a really amazing thing for getting people to not sleep properly. So I mean, clutter there. It could be suitcases there or work-related stuff there, all these things there that really oughtn't to really be in a bedroom. You know, say you've done a room, say you've done a job in the room in the house at home, you might have cleaned something or, or painted something or cleared that stuff, and you think, oh, now I can relax here, it's great space, now I can really relax, wonderful space, my feet up, and oh, it's wonderful. And the very, very same thing happens when you work on your bed space, <coughs> on your sleep space, your bedroom. Take the clutter away, clear it out, and you will sleep an awful lot better, because it's a much, much better space to sleep in, when there's less stuff in there. And you may have old books there and things piled up and so on there, and suitcase from a holiday you haven't emptied out yet, and all this type of stuff. But work on those things one by one, clear them all out, and you will sleep an awful lot better. One thing to avoid as well is the use of smartphones. Smartphones, tablets, your iPads, laptops, that kind of stuff, in bed at night, not a good idea at all. Because we have a very important chemical in our brain called melatonin which signals to our brain is the onset of sleep time. And when we have bright lights all around us and it's daytime, we kind of stay awake. But at nighttime, when it gets dark outside, we have artificial light on, that starts melatonin going, which tells our brain, okay, it's time to start winding down to go to sleep. And if you light up your brain again, you light up your eyes, your brain with stuff coming in from a tablet or from a laptop or from a smartphone, that lights up things inside there. And so your brain thinks it's still bright, broad daylight. It delays the onset of melatonin production 
and therefore delay is the onset of sleep. So the experts would say, again, 50 minutes to an hour of no exposure to these technologies, these devices at all, will also enhance your sleep. I see people ringing up or seeing you on phone and say it before o'clock in the morning saying, oh, I can't sleep. Well, that's why you can't sleep. You're on the phone. So put the phone away and then you will sleep. That's what's keeping you awake. So just put the phone away and go to sleep. That's a major one. And often people will be on the phone playing games, doing stuff to try and tire themselves and wonder why they don't get tired. And it's the light that's keeping them awake. I know we can get some, some light to, to turn the light down and so on, but still that just put it away is the best thing to do. For an hour or 50 minutes before you go to sleep, certainly have that out of your way and that will sleep much better. Watch caffeine. Caffeine and caffeine type drinks too close to bedtime. Indeed, caffeine, we know now from caffeine research, that caffeine can linger a long time in your system. And the coffee you have, say in the morning, can still be in your system that night. Because coffee can linger up to 12 hours, we know from some research on coffee. So watch that. No caffeine drinks after the afternoon or evening time. No caffeine drinks at all. Drink lots of non-caffeinated drinks and that will help you to sleep better. Avoid drinking too much too close to bedtime. That also gets you up to go to the bathroom during the night and that can also disturb your sleep. Also food, heavy meals. The experts say three hours between your last meal and the onset of sleep. So be eating too much before you go to sleep because that, that taxes your body and tax your liver and all bits of you to try and digest that and work that out and break that down and that can cause disruptive sleep as well. So watch that one. So no sleep, no, no meals, too close to going to bed. One really, really key thing to do, as far as possible you can do this, is to regularise your sleeping pattern. And by that I mean to get to bed at the same time each night and up at the same time each morning, as often as you possibly can. And you're going to say to me, okay, come on, I've got lots of kids, I can't, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But as often as you possibly can, get to bed at the same time and get up at the same time in the morning. So keep that pattern going. And that will greatly enhance sleep as well. Because say you're in bed some nights, say you go to bed at say 10 o'clock some nights, and you're trying to fall asleep at 10 o'clock. The next night, maybe you're going to bed at 12 o'clock. Maybe then you go to bed at half one the next night, then maybe nine o'clock. You, know, you have this, this changing time of going to sleep all the time. That confuses your system terribly. So once you regularize that pattern, go to bed at the same time each night, up the same morning, your, your brain knows, your body knows it's time now to wind down to go to sleep. You get to sleep much, much better. There are some key things about keeping yourself and having a good night's sleep. They'll be on the library webpage every day for you as well. I want to draw your attention to two books here, two really good books on sleep. The Sleep Book by Guy Meadows, which you can get in the library here, and the library is closed, but this can be got online. Hold that in a minute. And also a really good book by Matthew Walker called Why We Sleep. Really good book. Again, this is online to download as an ebook or as an audiobook. You can get this. And these are two very, very good books to have on the whole topic of sleep. Now you can go to the library website and you can download these things and also find a thing called BorrowBox, which I have here. BorrowBox will let you have access to the library's entire collection on your phone, on your iPad, or on your computer. You can access those things here and download those books as ebooks or also download them as audiobooks. They're all available there for you. Huge collection of stuff. You can access with, through this to the entire collection here in the library in Longford or whatever library you're attached to as well. So get those key things together. One very important thing again I mentioned is to regularize the pattern, exercise during the day. One thing if you possibly can do is just to avoid napping too much during the day. Napping is great but if you do that very very often it will take from your ability to sleep that night. I will look the next time we talk, I do something on resilience and on worrying and so on, and I will look at what you can do to stop those worries and stop them dead in their tracks and get a much better night's sleep from being able to stop the worries, put them way to one side and concentrate on sleeping better, sleeping properly. So in the meantime, have a good week and stay well and stay healthy. And one final thing, wear your shoulders, relax those shoulders, and take a nice good deep breath and focus on the breath. That calms things down straight away. It's a really good first aid thing to do whenever you want during the day to calm things down. Focus on the breath, your shoulders nicely relaxed. I'll see you next time around. In the meantime, stay well, have a good week, and we'll talk in a week's time.